Hi Hunter, so today we're going to start our notes for the first part of exponents, which is our next kind of topic that we're going to be studying within our first unit. So you're going to need your math notebook, you're going to need a pen or a pencil, you're going to need a glue stick, and then you're going to need to print this. So this is attached to the altitude card, and um, I also emailed it to you. So if you could just print this sheet. It has some stuff on the bottom that I cut off, so you can cut off that part from yours as well. So you're going to start by adding it to your table of contents. The video is going to be a little like zoomed in, so I'll try to move my notebook around so that you can see the whole thing just kind of in different chunks. So when you add it to your notebook, your title is going to be Exponents Notes. We actually did this in class on Wednesday. We don't have math class on Thursday, so if you can complete this on Thursday, then you'll be on the same page as us on Friday. So for me, that's page number eight. If it's a different page for you, just add whatever page works for you. So now we're going to go, into, go to the next page. You're gonna glue it in. And at the top, when you print yours, this might look different. When I printed my copy, this was cut off. So we're just gonna add exponents to the top because that's our title. And if you ever need to pause the video, just pause it before you move forward if you need to finish up something or catch something up. I'm just going to kind of go through it in one shot so the video is not super long, but you can pause it, rewatch it, however it works best for you. So we're going to start just at the top, and this kind of gives us just like a definition of what an exponent is. I know we did a little bit of it in fifth grade, and we're going to practice it again at the beginning of sixth grade. So when we learned, when you learn multiplication, you kind of one of the strategies you can use is repeated addition, where you just add the numbers multiple times. So two times four would be the same as adding the number two four times. The same thing is true for exponents, except this time it's repeated multiplication. So for an exponent, we're going to be multiplying the same number multiple times. And we're always going to be multiplying it by itself. So when we look at an exponent, we have kind of two different parts when we're looking at it in a math problem or by itself. So you always have a larger number that just looks like a regular number that we would be adding or multiplying or dividing or subtracting. This number is the same size as usual and it's what's called the base. So here it's represented by the lowercase b. I'm gonna like, outline my arrow because it's kind of hard to see. So if you want to shade yours in too, that will just make it really clear that it's pointing to the B. And this, in this case, it makes sense because the B stands for base, which starts with the letter B. So this is always going to be the large number whenever you're looking at a math problem or a math equation. Now the number in the upper right hand corner is always going to be small and that's the exponent. So only this part is called the exponent. And it's right now represented by a lowercase n. In a real problem, it's going to be any whole number. So the exponent is always going to be a smaller version of that number, and it's always going to be in the upper right-hand corner compared to the base. Okay. Next, we're gonna look at a few different examples. So in our first example, we have four with a little three. We can read that or say that in a few different ways. How we're gonna say it for these three, just to get started, is four to the power of three. So I'm going to write that down here. So we always start with our base. Remember, our four is our base. Um, and our three is our exponent. So we always say the base first. We can say the words to the power of, and then our exponent is always said last. All four to the power of three means is we're going to multiply four three times. So you're gonna write the number four, one, two, three times, and we're gonna multiply them together. 
The dots just mean multiplication. So that's another symbol that it can be used instead of the multiplication symbol. So it's a little less kind of busy on the page. So in order to do this, we'll do four times four first, which is 16. And then when we do 16 times four, that gives us 64. So I'm just gonna box that in. So four times four times four is the same as four to the power of three. When we have one, this one's really easy because one times itself is always just one. So we do have to multiply it five times because we have one to the power of five. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We wrote one five times. But when we, when we multiply one by itself, no matter how many times we do it, we're always going to get one. So that one is pretty quick. And then last but not least, we have three to the power of two. So three to the power of two. Okay, I know that's kind of squished in there. You can extend yours this way if that makes it easier for you to see on your copy. So make sure you're filling in your copy as we go. Remember, you can pause if you need to. So three to the power of two is just the same as multiplying three twice. So that means we just have the number three twice. Three times three, and that equals nine. Okay, so this does get a little more complex when our numbers get larger, but the overall concept is going to be the same. It's just the math, the actual like multiplication might get a little trickier. So the next part we're gonna look at is right here. And this gives us a few different ways to read exponents out loud. So when we read them out loud, you can always say the base to the power of the exponent. So four to the power of three. However, there's kind of like other ways you can say certain exponents. When you have the power of two, another way to write that is squared. You might remember that from when we're doing like area. We have two dimensions and so our units are always labeled as squared. Same thing if you have an exponent of two. So here we could say three squared instead of three to the power of two. And then when you have um, a power of three, you can say that using the word cubed. So just like when we're doing volume and we have three dimensions, we label that with the exponent of three and we read it like centimeters cubed or inches cubed. So same thing here. So cubed is the power of three, squared is the power of two. Okay, the only part we have left, and this is where my video might get a little bit slanted as I have to move up the notebook, but we're just gonna do this last section that says try it. Remember, you can cut off this section that involves negative numbers. So we'll get to those eventually, but for now we're gonna stick with positive numbers. So we're gonna go through these examples and then we're gonna kinda learn these little tricks on the side. So two to the power of five, we're gonna write the number two five times. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna multiply it together each time. So you can always count your numbers, one, two, three, four, five, that matches the exponent, so I'm good to go. So two times two, that wasn't good. I meant to kind of do a little bracket, but two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16, and 16 times two is 32. Okay. Next we have five to the third, or five cubed. So we're gonna write five three times, multiply it together. We know that five times five is 25, and then we need to multiply 25 by five. It might be helpful if you have um, like another piece of paper where you can show your work. I'm just gonna use, grab a sticky note and use that. my sticky note which I'm gonna put right here for now and then I'll move it so we have 25 times 5 we know that 5 times 5 is 25 so I bring down my 5 and I carry my 2 and then we have 2 times 5 is 10 plus 2 is 12 so 5 cubed 
or 5 to the power of 3 is 125. Okay, next we're going to talk about when we have 10 as our base, because this one there's a shortcut or a little trick for as well. So when you have a base of 10, so whenever 10 is your main number, all you need to do is write the number 1, and then you add however many zeros the exponent tells you to. So we're going to add 1, 2, 3 zeros. That gives us 1,000, so that is our answer. So you should have one followed by the appropriate number of zeros that matches your exponent. If we wanted to do it out, just to kind of show you how this works, we would have 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So that trick always works when you have a base of 10. Okay? I'm just going to move my sticky over here. I'll move it off in case you need to see that. And now we're going to do these ones all have shortcuts as well. So when we have any number to the power of 1, we just write that number once and we're done. So 12 to the power of 1 is 12. Now we have 10 to the power of 5. So remember we need to add our number 1 and then 5 zeros behind it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Making sure we're adding our comma after three digits. So our answer for this one is 100,000. Okay, this one looks daunting and a little bit tricky when we look at it first, but we just have to add 13 zeros. So I'm gonna add my one. This one I'm going to write a little smaller because I know I have a lot of zeros coming behind the one. I'm gonna add 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 going to add my commas after every three digits and that is my answer <laughs> so that's a big one but remember 13 zeros five zeros for number five and six and now we're just going to look at our shortcuts over here so any number to the first power, I guess they're looking for. I was confused by that for a second. So any number to the first, sorry, sorry, Hunter. <laughs> I got mixed up on this one. Any number to the zero power is one. So we did not have any examples of that and we might run into it in your workbook. But if I ever had like six to the zero, that equals one. If I had nine to the zero, that equals one. Sorry, I was a little mixed up on that for a second. I mixed these two up. Any number to the first power, so that's where we had like 12 to the one, is itself, you just write that number one time. Powers of 10 will only contain ones and zeros. So if I ever have um, like a base of 10, so I guess that really means the base, will only contain ones and zeros. So 10 to the power of anything. So I'm gonna put base in parentheses. Whenever the base is 10, all of your numbers will be ones or zeros because you always start out with the number one and then add the appropriate number of zeros. So right now you can kind of pause and if you need to fill out anything, more you can it's hard for me to like show the entire thing at once but you can see most of it if i scroll just like that and then i'm just going to show you what you need to do in your workbook so we already did the first activity in our workbook um the other day when you were at school so today after you watch this video you're going to do page number five and page number six, okay? So I'm gonna write it right here too. So you need to do page five through six. Okay, that is all for this lesson. There'll be a second part that will be assigned to you on Friday. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye, Hunter.